session uh, is Mr. Piyush Taylor, and uh, he is uh, going to be delivering his session on introduction to ROS. So I request uh, Mr. Piyush to kindly start over with his session. I hand it over to Mr. Piyush now. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I'm really sorry uh, to start uh, a delay between our presentation. So let's get started. Uh, I'm Piyush and I'll be delivering you uh, some basic knowledge about uh, OpenCV, how to uh, make your software as well as your hardware integration with the uh, camera, how to take visuals uh, inputs, and how to make uh, uh, the image processing, the threshold uh, setting for an image, uh, which can be based on different criteria, different parameters. They can be in the form of shapes. They can be in the form of size. They can be in the form of colors also, or any other particular effect <clears throat> or a face of an individual, uh, something which is very very unique. There are different parameters which can be considered. Apart from this, we will be uh, we'll be starting with basic knowledge of, uh, for PyCharm. We will be discussing about how to access PyCharm, what are its, uh, what are the features available in it, what are its, uh, different types of tools, and other accessories which can be utilized for uh, up to in order to optimize our uh, application or the project which on which we are working on. After that, uh, we will be a little bit uh, be more engraved in the how to make uh, libraries installed in our software and. Uh, uh, then we will be uh, coming to a basic coding for uh, how to how to uh, put some algorithms in your image. And uh, after that, we will be looking into how to make a robotic arm calibrate with your camera for pick and place application. So thank you so much everyone for inviting me here and uh, let's get started with our <clears throat> presentation. OK, so basically OpenCV is an uh, open source computer vision library in which you can uh, you can basically have features as well as parameters which can be applied for visual aspects. Uh, before there was uh, there was a time when your uh, logic skills were important when you play with numbers uh, at the time of uh, 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 evaluation of computers <clears throat> but now what's important is basically the visual uh, inspection as well as uh, the critical analysis from uh, very deep pictures sometimes you must have also seen in various movies and other entertainment activities, how they can uh, just uh, from a scratch of a reflecting mirror can get the image of the person who is taking the pictures. So these all things when visualization, when your camera input, when something which 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 have like uh, uh, something which our eyes can witness and then you uh, take out the uh, inputs take out the raw materials which are your requirement for a particular application then uh, open cv player uh, important role in that it was originally developed by intel and natively uh, natively written in c++ and it can be programmed uh, using python c as well as c++ so uh, we will be uh, looking into start with how to start with open cv using Python and this cross uh, cross platform which can it can work on both Android as well as iOS and it is free to use raised under BSD license. So without uh, making much uh, more about most of the theoretical knowledge we will put our hands on on how to uh, make uh, our uh, how to proceed with our thoughts uh, when you have a, uh, when you have a when you have a, a image of uh, of an aim or target in your mind 
so for that for this we'll be requiring certain amounts uh, we'll be requiring a pc as a hardware and for software part we have certain softwares like we'll be using pycharm we have to install uh, libraries of open tv we have to install open tv packages so we will briefing that how we can uh, verify that whatever uh, we have installed or whatever we will be using is same as we have already inbuilt functions or already inbuilt files for that so the reason behind choosing pycharm for this application is that it, uh, pycharm is easy to install it has a ease of real time result presentation it consumes less ram easy access to features open source friendly layout of course pycharm is a small uh, software if you are just starting with a language if you are just starting with uh, python or if you are starting with c c++ then uh, python is quite a small software however it gives you a variety of customized features so uh, before going to some other deep algorithms of ml and ai uh, python can give you a boost as well as a great start so it is it is quite user friendly also so it might be uh, interesting for all of, the, all of other guys who are not uh, who have not uh, programmed before and not coded before So uh, to that to uh, to have that we have to install libraries. The functions of libraries is to basically interpret what are inputs from our uh, what are the user inputs and how it can uh, I think someone mic is on so it a kind of hindrance for my Yeah, I'll just move it. Uh, sure. Yes, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, libraries in Open uh, I'm sorry, libraries in your PyCharm are basically the interpretations which uh, are helpful for the communication interference between the user. And the computer. So, for example, if you type one in a numerical format, then computer will think it as one. However, if you put some function in, in initial starting, suppose you write something like uh, print one or something print in a string or something like if you talk about open CV, then you write CV to IM read. So, C in order to understand the computer CV to IM read, what does how to interpret it, how to code it, we require different sets of libraries for its communication. So we will be uh, choosing how to choose interpreter for our functioning. And uh, we'll be uh, using NumPy as well as uh, for pixels calculations as well as pixels uh, threshold variation and their changes, studying their changes. For that, we'll be using NumPy. So for those for whom to whom the NumPy is a new library, then uh, I'll just brief you about uh, NumPy is a library for basically matrix calculations where uh, you can uh, put different algorithms, different formulas, different uh, calculation formats, which can be addition of number of rows, number of columns, diagonally opposite, or some uh, dip, uh, some uh, particular format which can be a Fibonacci sequence or something which is which have a uh, direct influence of uh, application in your project. So if you want to access just those uh, columns as well as rows in your matrix, then NumPy is easy to access as well as easy to use. So it gives a variety of features also which are new and which simplify your calculation. In case you, <clears throat> in case suppose we have not encountered any library as uh, called NumPy, then we have to jot down all the values uh, on our own instead of uh, taking the numbers one by one. So that would be also lengthy as well as time taking, might not be very much efficient. So in with introduction on NumPy, this series things has been resolved as well as solved um, to a great extent. And NumPy play an important role in calculation of open TV because if we uh, if we glance if we took a glance on a picture, then we can see it is made up of different colors, different color. Uh, values different color formats as well as they are placed at different locations and uh, 
to your to your evolved mind if you customize the pictures into a grid format then you might realize that it's basically a matrix which have a color combination uh the color combination put on so suppose if you if you uh, put if you change your image into a grid format which will like suppose if you change it to 4 into 5 uh rows and columns so uh, that would be quite a big image for uh, of size like 10 cm into 20 cm but instead of 4 into 5 you you cut it uh, into 400 to 400 into 500 or something like 4000 into 500 then each a uh, point in the dimension in the dimension of the image is uh, will be uh, where about uh, or where about like will be almost taken as a point and uh, will be addressed as a uh, number or it ad- will be addressed with the help of number the num- row number as well as the column number so suppose if you talk about uh, so if we have like image of 10 cm to 20 cm and we cut it into 2000 into and 2000 and 5000 and then we have to make uh, changes into a, a row number to our row number like 1500 and column number 3500 so in order to uh, specify that position you want that uh, location has a white color but you want it to have black color but suppose you have a uh a, a tiktok game and that you want to change from zero to cross to all uh, to certain values so by using these algorithms you can you can uh, specify the location you can specify the changes and then things become quite easy but in our open cv case we have uh, as we are talking about a 1500 as well as 3500 1500 rows and 3500 column address so on that place we won't be having any particular value we won't be having any uh in real life we will be having a particular color so the computer read we uh, visualize it as a color but the computer read it as a value so suppose if there is a presence of a uh, green color so we will be seeing it as a green color but computer will decode it as uh, the values as 0.2550 rgb so Uh, by taking that into consideration if you want to change the color format to something else so we want to lighten it up or we want to uh, make a suitable changes like if we have some if we talk about uh, green light uh, traffic lights then there this can be an appli- this application can have a, a quite a large impact that if you want that after uh, you you place a camera on the road facing uh, the road the whole uh, area of the road so if you see that the length of the vehicle accumulated uh, like more than uh, 10 meters then you automatically put on the green lights on so that all the vehicle should uh, uh, move uh, should have a space or like uh, would be scattered around so you should be waiting for each or uh, each and every one of them to wait to put all all in front of 10 meter and then uh, after uh, that you should code your uh, check your camera that the red light should turn into green so these uh, application changes as well as modification can be utilized in different formats we have a uh, certain application which involves cameras in metros we have the uh, uh, open cv application uh, can be used in drones as well as robotic arm for pick and place which we will be dec- uh, discussing in next uh, in future slides then we have garbage sorting so if you talk about where there can be a camera uh, i think that can be a, a great value even because of uh, uh, eyes have a uh, 570 pic- 76 megapixels of camera but uh, with our human uh, uh, intelligence as a well mind we can develop something which is uh, more uh, uh, optimized we if we have we, if we can look into billions and uh, uh, billions light years away millions light years away then i think we can make a quite a remarkable change in history of mankind too with this so uh, if we talk about what processes we can follow on earth i think drones are the best application some of the areas of arunachal pradesh or if we talk about india then some of the areas of different border lines are not accurately mapped they were in uh, 
disputes or there might be some problems or we want to map uh, under underwater mapping we want to do about various trench mariana trench or something like which uh, where human uh, uh, human cannot go it's quite hard as well as difficult for them to make their presence over there so in that case we can put drones we can put camera on that and we can uh, process things like that cameras in metros if you are looking for some person then we have page detection we have some algorithms already made can you have detection for particular application as well as they accord and they vary according to their usage garbage sorting the th the garbage sorting concept can be also be put to to put to the fact that we can also sort out the uh, bad fruits from the good ones by uh, pulling them into a process uh, through a pulley belt and then we can actually punch each one of them with a hammer or we can uh, use an actuator this can all all be robotic control as well as uh, will require minimum human interference and will be working in with working with a great uh, capacity so if you want to more uh, learn more about uh, open cv there they, these are some official link as well as i find these book quite uh, good if you someone wants to really do something uh, great and uh, have, want to start with beginning uh, so they can be a, a, a great glance to you so uh, let us uh, put our hands on on how to start with which how to start with software how to install required libraries how to start with a little bit about uh, the uh, the software so i'll just i'll just share my whole screen instead of this just give me a second please okay we are here So if you want to uh, start with PyCharm, you can simply download it and uh, you can download the community version because professional will be paid version. So you can start with the if you are developing interest and you can of course go for a paid version to enjoy extra features. So JetBrains has this really interesting software PyCharm. I'm going to start with it. So initially we have to select uh, the let let us name our project as uh, I think we should name it let's name it the EC and it will create virtual uh, images virtual factors virtual uh, whatever the uh, backside uh, environment you will be requiring. It will basically create an environment which are favorable to your code, their understanding as well as their nomenclature and the logic interpretation, of course. I have quite a, a lot of number of uh, libraries installed so it takes quite a time to process all of them so this is my uh, as you can see this is my project here and i have here uh, dec which is my project name and the location where it is installed so first of all the most important thing when you start with software is how which interpreter you want to use interpreters are basically the interference uh, a bridge which uh, fulfills the gap between the, your coding as well as your uh, target or the aim process. So I'll just go to file and I will choose uh, settings. Then I'll go for project DEC and then I'll go for project interpreter. So as you can see, it has made an uh, another interpreter, Python 300 DEC and the location and has two packages already installed on it but i don't want to use this one because i have already have another this one python 3.8 poly which uses all the which have all the combination of libraries as well as 
as well as the access tool, which will be required for a variety of applications. So I have uh, like Pi Audio for functioning with audios, and I have Pi Qt5 if you are using something with Qt Curator. We I have R Parser for different orientation. I have a CP. I have Cardit. So whenever you tends to install, uh, I could have used this interpreter, this interpreter also. But then I have whatever will be my requirement, then I have to install all those things again. So in order to do that, uh, you have to uh, 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 go here on the plus sign and then you have to type the package name. So if I go and type open CV and I can see a variety of uh, sample packages here. So which one will be my uh, for my preference? I can simply read a little bit about it description in case you are confused between two uh definition to uh, uh uh words or two like uh, similar looking words which she give you an illusion which one to choose so you can of course go to the description read about it a little bit of course the uh, uh, some links here about the library they're working then you can basically install package and since i have already have something in my then it will be shown over here in case uh, some package has been uh, installed already, but you have not updated it, so you can simply do it from here. Upgrade. So I'll be not installing all those. It will take quite a moment as well as this. I have already installed something already. Uh, I have already installed interpreter in my gallery. So uh, after selecting this for your project file, you can click on apply and then you can get, click on OK. So uh, now uh, when I have this project, I want to uh, I want to basically create a file on which I will be writing my code and then uh, I'll be I'll be processing the code according to my need. And in case if I require some extra accessories some peripherals for example if uh, you will look into future and uh, in the future of coming minutes that how if you want to, that you are uh, if you are importing something suppose if if you make presentation and if we insert a uh, videos and uh, images in that so we don't have to put that all the the whole uh, the whole folder together so in order to do that here, same, we have to uh, take the images, take the files, take the requirements, or take the accessories here. Uh, you will look into future uh, upcoming uh, code examples. We will be looking into it. So I have to, I will be creating a file, but I will be creating it for coding. So I will create Python file, and I'll just name it, uh, I'll just name it mm, it. Let's name. I'll just name it it. And so, <clears throat> if you are new to with Python, you can. Uh, yeah, how to debug your code is an important factor because when you when you write a quite a number quite a long code, then it's important that when whenever you're stuck in between or your code is not giving proper results. Then debugging is important factor. What can you can do? So for a common beginner, I think print uh, is a is a enormous has an enormous effect. Is a something which is like a magic because it's quite simple and it's quite uh, easy to interpret. So I'll just brief you about a little bit of uh, some formulas, some uh, loops, and some of the Python uh, functions. So here in PyCharm, you can see we have terminal here where it uh, if you want to install something like so if you want to install a pip or something like that, you can simply call it from here instead of calling it from your uh, command window. We have Python console where we can see what has been printed, for example, or what are the output function or what you want to input. If I write print and then I go for December. And I'll just right click on it and I'll just run it. Okay, so it, 
it prints uh, quite good. It prints the required results. So I can see all these results here. So uh, if I want to go with some other uh, variables, like suppose if I have A is equals to five and I have B is equals to six, then I'll C is equals to A plus B. Then I'll just print. I'll just print C. Keep in mind that it won't, it don't require any uh, uh, words. So I have value of print C as 5 plus 6, that is 11. But uh, uh, suppose if we have uh, quite a lot number of values, for example, if I put uh, uh, this into a loop, we want to basically start with loop because that are important for optimizing our equation, of course. For i in uh, for i in range, or as you can say for i in a, and then we can start with c equals to a plus i, and let's turn the c again. Let's call it for the range. Nine. So uh, we have uh, basically the concept involved here is first of all starting with for loop. So when you when you write for i in range a, then i is a defined variable which you have defined just now. And what you want to do is that you want to uh, change the value of i again and again until and unless it reaches the value equal to uh, a. <clears throat> but when we are writing range, then you have to, it has to start. I has to start up at zero. So initially, uh, it will have my value as zero, and uh, after that, it will I has value one, then two, then three, then four. That's it. So if you add all these numbers, and uh, uh, you make C that is the value equal to. Uh, a that is 5 plus C that uh, I that will last value will be 4. So uh, that value will come as 9. But uh, the C keeps on changing, so that uh, does not make, make any sense for including our including the for loop in our code. However, it was just for understanding purpose. So this was just a little bit basic, which we will be using, which will be having our application. So let's just uh, start with our real uh, uh, application, how to access the camera and all these stuff. So for that purpose, I have to first of all, the, like all the libraries which will be uh, which I'll be using or which I'll be functioning in my code. So for OpenCV, we write it as op import CV2. And of course, that is important because you have to check where your libraries are installed. So I'll just again go to settings and I'll go to interpreter and I'll go to this same. And I'll search here OpenCV. Okay, so I have OpenCV Python. 4.3.0.3.6. Sorry, 3.6. So that's my version. I think it's just the most latest one. And I have pip2. Okay, so uh, I can see that yes, this is installed here. So I don't have to uh, make any extra efforts for its confirmation or things like that. So after that, I'll be just, let's just import numpy as we have already talked. And let's do this. OK, so uh, while uh, while doing this, uh, let us first of all uh, take an image and uh, uh, give it certain how to how to like how to import an image into our uh, code. So I'll just uh, I'll just make it IMG. Let's uh, call it IMG. Uh, 
variable and uh, I'll write CV2 dot uh, I and read. And I'll just write the name of the file. So for example, if I have some few, let's take this scr.png. Uh, let's uh, okay. Let's go with this one. Only. So I'll just first of all initially has to take this to my virtual environment. So I'll just copy it, and I will just paste it in my environment. Okay. I'll just name it SVR. Okay. So if I write IMG SVR, I am read, and I'll just uh, S. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if this is uh, does this have any error? Oh, okay. So do not have any error. So if uh, there is mostly problem with indentation in Python, so I just uh, want to give a bonus tip to all of you that if you are coding and sometimes you think that you have your uh, these two things are at same place instead, in, in, still you will be having indentation problem. So the most efficient way for this is that you use tab for all your Greater spaces, not back, uh, back, uh, backspace, because your one, two, three, four, five backspaces from here might be equal to tab, but they are things which are mixed up, mingled. So in order to avoid that, and in order to uh, avoid your waste of time, you should use backs, uh, backs, uh, backspace whenever there are one to two spaces, and always use tab for the extra spaces. So I have this. Uh, also, meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can surely them put them into the uh, chat box. Uh, I will just address it. Uh, soon. Okay, so I have uh, uh, taken the image into my environment, and I want to see what I have. Uh, basically, I am not convinced. I am not very uh, how to verify that what I have, I have taken is uh, right or wrong. So I'll go for CV2. Dot I am show. You can take out that uh, show is something like it will be displaying us the results. And I'll say image, which will be the title like it, and ing. So I'll just uh, if I run it. Oh, I think there was some splashing of black color, but I couldn't see it properly. So let's run it once again. Okay, the same happened again. So I think we are missing something here. That we couldn't see uh, the image. However, there was something which uh, small size, same as the SVR logo, what we have seen. So I want to see the image, but uh, uh, the problem here is that our frequency of uh, working is quite fast, and the image couldn't be picturized with the naked eye. So I'll just put some EV2 dot wait key, and let's put a delay of one, and let's see if there are some changes in the results. Okay, okay, I, I could see something for quite. Let's make it 10. Oh, that will be microsecond, I believe. Okay, so now, now something feels that yes, we have this uh, same image, same image as what we have uh, seen before. Okay, so it, uh, it could be displayed for 10 seconds. Let's make it. Uh, one second only. Okay, so let's make it two. Okay, so we could basically change for how much time you want to see an image. But suppose if you have some <clears throat> some application where you don't want to set a particular time for uh, visualizing an uh, image. For example, if you are given that you have to verify the names of the medicine on a on the on the and the paper which has been given by you to a doctor so you have to ver verify like 50 uh, that would be like mm -hmm. like 5000 uh, paper paper packs per, per day so you won't be uh, wasting your time in uh, checking the uh, suppose you have said that you have to check the date uh, on the paper which you have to verify so you have to just to take a glance on the date and it is like uh, today's date then you have to make it right 
so they are most of the uh, cases more many of the cases will be like you won't be having any problem but there is slight uh, chance that you might encounter any problem in that so you don't want to waste your basically what you have to concentrate on that you don't want to waste your time uh, viewing the image for 2 second every time uh, but uh, as because you can simply solve it in 1 second or may, maybe less than that so i don't want to make a, a display to for a particular amount of time but i want it to display to a time and let me just uh, put some button code here so that whenever my i uh, have seen the it so whenever i have seen it i can simply uh, press the button and this should go so i okay i have this sphere logo displayed for infinite number of time infinite number of seconds and if i just post, uh, put a, a press a button for example if i press q okay so this is gone or if i press some other button and okay this is gone again even it works for with a space bar okay so for, for that application where you want to customize your display time for an image or something your frames you can simply go with these uh uh simply go with the uh cv2 weight key zero to define the amount of time okay so uh we have imported the image but uh, now i want to i want to make this image into some different format i want to uh, uh, i don't want you might have used some uh, apps which gives different for different filters to then to your pictures so let's just go for a basic one black and white so how to in, suppose you have this image of yours and it is it, it will display for infinite number of seconds so you want this image to be turned black and white so i'll just make it uh, let's make it uh, b and uh, let's name it b our variable bw and we will going to store the, in this variable the image the uh, black and white image so i will just take it as a cv2 dot in order to make it black and white we will change the code uh, we will change the color conversion uh, if you talk about uh, our uh, laptop our processor then we in computers what we have we have a uh, limit uh, we have a working uh, number from 0 to 255 so what color conversion formula do it will take that anything which is uh, less than 127 will be considered as black and anything which is uh, uh, greater than 127 will be considered as white uh, with the intensity of change depending upon the number which the color process so that is a theoretical definition which might be a little bit confusing so let us uh, look at the practical example if we make it uh, cv2 and then we make it cv color convert color okay and then we make it ing ing is basically the input uh, address of the image which we need to be converted into some other format and we will just simply call cv2 color uh, bgr to gray so initially we have a blue green red color format and we want to convert into gray okay so let's see if our what result do we get okay so we we didn't see any changes in that uh let's uh, run it again and there might be some problem okay now also we don't have any uh, changes okay so if uh, we might we have applied the we have applied the changes here but we couldn't see this because we are not depicting the image to display so i have Uh, apply changes using bw in the variable bw image but that has not been displayed so i'll just change it here to b and w and let's see if uh, this works or not <coughs> okay so this i think this is this uh, turned out to be fine i have conversion is black and white this is a full image or the size does not change okay so if uh, uh 
let's compare both the images if i want to see both the image so i'll just call this function again and i'll call it uh let's call it original and let's uh, call this one uh this one let's call it black and white okay, so by doing this see let us see that if you can visualize uh, the two images simultaneously uh so that we can depict the difference how it uh, has changed its form or how our code has put an impact okay so i'll just uh, run it okay so to i have both the images to as same so let us uh, change the address to so we can visualize the changes okay so now uh, you can see that i have the original as colored one and uh, the other one is black and white so we have uh, applied i think that could that could be very much uh, <clears throat> helpful for the people who use uh, different apps so these filters can be applied in that form or format but let us proceed to some other let us uh, see some other uh, features what can we use with open cv can we make some uh, other changes other image processing algorithms <clears throat> but uh, before moving to that uh, let us let us just verify what uh, uh, how we could access things which we have already built up already made so i'll just go to my uh, open project here and i'll go for let's open this one and if i go here and if i check the interpreter again so in uh, i can make this as a default interpreter for my usage but that would be so unrealistic if we talk about that so uh, we have taken this into consideration and uh, let's let's make something more uh, something little bit different so uh let us import another image and let us display the two image algorithms together that if we can use two images together and uh, can we process them so we will repeat the same process we will take uh, let us take the two blues ball and uh, i'll just copy it <clears throat> and i'll just uh, paste it here and i'll just let it be named as two blues for this i have to take img2 and cv2 i'll just make it quite a fast so that we will cope up with the process read and then i'll make it available as two blues and for this uh, let us apply some different algorithms uh, let us repeat the same okay first of all we will just display we will just see what uh, we need to see that if our uh, things are working quite Let's fine think. Let's think. is the phone is the phone sorry can you please uh, repeat okay phone sure just just a minute Thank you. 
sir, in files, sitting. Will this be suffice? Yes. Settings, Hello. font, files, setting. Uh, uh, is is this is this okay? That uh, will this yeah, be okay? Fine now. It's fine now. It's fine now. Yeah. Yeah, you were saying something. Settings. Uh, okay. Sure. Sure. Output uh, okay. So uh, we have seen the in case you talk, you were talking about the outputs for this one. I think we have seen that one. So let us uh, see the second image too simultaneously with this one. So I'll just uh, make it uh, PV to original. Let's put it double L. Okay, so uh, I can see two two images. I can take inputs, which can be n number of images according to your needs. And what I'll I'll do next is that I'll basically simply put some other other algorithm. So if I if I take I M G two, I'll make it uh, can and let's give it C V two dot canny. It doesn't give us any. Okay, so now it does give any. Uh, we, it gives us suggestions about are uh, this. So I'll just uh, name it IMG2. And let's see if this gives particular error or if, if this goes uh, quite good. Okay, so it's it wants us to uh, say some parameters to it. So I think we have to put the values here. OK. <clears throat> OK, so I have named a variable and I have put the uh, I have put. I put my uh, email into that, so I'll just make it uh, some values in case you couldn't remember what input does it require. You can simply cross it out and then you can type one letter and then you can press control as well as spacebar so that it can give you suggestions or which function you might be using. So for as of now, I'll be using Kenny and detection. It's some quite a reputed method for detecting the sites, detecting the boundaries, detecting the dark lines on an image by conversions. So it has some values like I have to give the image input, which is two, and I have to give the Threshold values. As you can see, as soon as I'm typing, I have been uh, uh, known here that I have to give image threshold one, threshold two, edges if any, aperture size if any, L2 gradient if any. So, in case you couldn't match the sequence, these are for your uh, guidance about how you want your uh, algorithms to perform. So, I just uh, go with the simple one. I have put some random values, uh, random threshold values that. Uh, if this goes higher and this lies between this and this, some values, so they should be and required results. So I'll just uh, make it CV2 again and I'll just uh, call this variable to my uh, this one and I'll just remove, I will just change the name what uh, we have used. So I'll just make it Kenny as we are using the algo. OK, so uh, these are my results. I have original. OK, so this is. I have this as the output for this one. So as you can see, it has some uh, uh, concrete behind the balls, which are quite uplifted, quite uh, bulging out. So for that, I have these values. For I have these uh, lines which are in function. So if I uh, let us change a uh, special value to something else, for example, let us give it 1000 and run the code. So it doesn't give any output as you can see. 
so basically define defining the uh, length to, to which extent you want to, uh, things to be sorted out this this uh, will work fine if we give it 10 and 50 let's see if the results show us some changes or not Okay, so it, the the frequency for the uh, the frequency for the boundaries has increased, as you can see. So uh, for that, uh, okay, I think we have some chat message. Can you copy the code into chat box? We can try parallel. Sure, no problem with that. I'll just control C. But I think that would be quite problematic for you because in case you will be repeating the code, uh, you have to make a, a customized change on your own about the image. I have taken these images. So whatever image you put into your project list here, you have to call it same to these address. Then it will work just fine. OK, so let us move forward with a little bit uh, uh, which is more interesting uh, about uh, on our next step. So now what I want to do is that enough of the uh, images, I want to do something with the video. Okay, so I'll just, uh, I think I've, let us make another file instead. So I'll just uh, uh, create new file and I'll call it, uh, 8.1. I'll repeat the same steps. So for CV2, import CV2, import NumPy as NP. That's quite phenomenal. Okay, then as you can see that in our image concept, we have we have we have used IMG CV2 IM read. But uh, in our video concept, we have a little bit different picture about it. So uh, for the in this case, so we will let's name it vid. And I will make it available as vcv2 dot video capture. And I'll just uh, name the address. In our case, we have SQL PNG. So I have to arrange a video. OK, sure. Uh, so, uh, let I uh, have this video available here. I'll just con uh, I'll just copy it again. So this one, this is no use as of now. So I'll just put that video in my environment. Oh. Okay, so I have this uh, my uh, file eight one one and then. Possible only to hello. Hello. Sorry, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is possible only to try with. Sorry, could you please repeat? I am I'm not able to hear you. Can we try any other image with extension other than PNG? I think there is some uh, issue with the voice. Uh, you can chat. Uh, sorry, you can put the question in chat, madam. Uh, your voice is breaking. Uh, 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 we can continue with the session, Piyush. Uh, as sure. we get the question to chat, we can discuss that. Okay, sure, no problem. Okay, so uh, as we have looked at in image concept, we have to make an address available. Okay, so I think we have a question in the chat box. Can we try with any other image with other extension than PNG? Yes, we can try. I think we have tried with two different extension here. One I have used dot png and one I have used dot jfif. So that's not a big issue unless the 
format extension is unique as a different which is not accepted and not utilized at different platforms so uh, for this question i think that will work just fine okay so coming back to our uh, coming back to our video uh, concept here how to put your videos into motion so i'll just again put the address v and uh, i think it doesn't give you any recommendations so v dot mp4 so i think there it will it, it might encounter an error so it should have given no suggestion okay so i have taken this video into this format and uh, i want to make this available to the people uh, i want to basically uh, i want to uh, see it what i have this video about so i'll call again cv2.im read function and i'll make it uh, uh, normal or let's call it original again and uh, i'll just uh, put the address of the frame okay, so it doesn't have any flags i'll just make it uh, the changes which are giving certain errors so it will be i am show not i am read because i am read for to read the frame which in uh, i image cases it will be i am read in our video case will be video capture so and i want it to be displayed for quite a few seconds so i'll just call it or like just make it zero or uh, let's make it uh, one uh, we can change the values afterwards let's see if our results are good okay so i have some issues we have some issues here let's sideline and again the indentation problem sometimes give extra problems with our working so i'll just get a uh, tv2 im show and file name will be read let's make it read address Okay, there's an issue with the indentation. Don't give us any uh, v dot I'll just uh, remove this for a time being. Should have shown some. Let's make it with you. 
and see if we get some suggestions here. Let's uh, change it a little bit more. So I'll just make it to video. I think it should display suggestions here. There might be some problem with it. Um, the timing, I'll just remove this one again. So I just see we do. And let's see. Okay, so we have issue with I am sure. Let's make it into single quotes again and uh, and we will make suitable changes. <clears throat> okay so uh, let's uh, let's make it a different scenario here so i think it's uh, there's some problem with the working as of now uh, so i'll just instead of taking a video into format let's just work with the camera so i think that will be more uh, uh, influential as well as uh, it will be more practical to look into it. So I'll just uh, put, uh, I will just connect things to my webcam and let's see if I am getting some results with that. So I'll just put, I'll just put here instead of the address, which is currently having some issues. I, um, uh, I'll just put cap CB2 video capture and the uh, value zero. The reason behind uh, putting zero is the fact that if you're using webcam of your laptop, then you have to put zero. If you're using USB camera, then you have to place one, two, three, according to your naming and the address of your USB port. Normally, laptops have three. It can be less than that. So you can, the, the value can be changed and can be uh, worked upon. So after that, I'll just, uh, I want to see what I have here. So I'll just take another. Uh, variable image and I'll put my cam. Okay, so I'll just put it cap dot read. Uh, this shouldn't be saying otherwise it should be. let's call it cam. So I'll just call it cam and then I'll just make it cam dot read. And after that I'll see I am getting any results. I'll just go for the same I am show. And I am sure we'll be having that's uh, let's give it a number instead this time. And I have ING. Okay, see if I have if we get any results. The screen oh. is not updating. Not the screen is not updating. Okay. Uh, the screen is not updating. No, it's working fine. Uh, I'm able to see uh, whatever you're typing. Problem with the internet connection. Yeah, maybe. Okay. So I'll just uh, be a little bit slow in my progression so that it should be uh, not buffering in your case. Okay, so here I have again a CV2 IM show address 
and then cb2 my wait list uh, so i'll just make it 1000 daily let's see what results does it give okay so this is my this is the image where i'm sitting currently right now but i want to figure this out uh, uh with a moving number of frames not just frame because it has captured an image for me it has not captured any it has not captured what i was really looking for what i was looking for here uh so for that we as we have as we have briefed about how to start a while loop so i'll just make a sequence of frames to work accordingly in function that it should uh, it should create, it should give an introduction, it should, be, it should give me about the, uh, it should uh, present me as a continuation of image. So, uh, I'll here I'll just get, put the while loop and I'll take on this end of frame. And uh, but before doing that, let us, let us just give it zero instead. So let's see if we can, Okay, so uh, that doesn't come didn't come out quite good. So I'll just uh, I'll just make uh, thousand again. I'll just uh, put into a loop what we were initially doing, and and let's see if uh, this is instead thousand. Let us make it zero. So that we could basically look into how this is working. Okay, so I think it's giving me some error. Okay, so uh, at this, these all things are in a loop. We have to put that indentation properly. Okay, so uh, this is me, but. Uh, what we can see that I am uh, not the the screen has been taken a picture and it has stopped. But if I press numbers, then it it keeps on moving. Okay, so I want this uh, this should not work with my buttons. I want it to work accordingly with automation. So I just put one. That will work as one microsecond, and. Uh, if I want to increase the, and I want to increase the frame rate, or if I want to, uh, this is the maximum frame rate I think we can get. If we want to decrease it to some extent, if we want, let us play it hundred. Okay, so that is moving quite. Uh, I think the internet buffering is quite too much that you won't be able to observe the difference. So I'll just make it quite large. Like uh, let us make it one second. Uh, you can simply check for the fan which is just above me so that has quite decreased frame rate let's see it for a while okay so one important thing in uh, capturing video is that uh, we have to a decrease we have to again close the close the wall which we have opened when things are finished so i'll just keep it one and i'll, I'll just make it uh the cap okay uh, cap dot release i think So what it actually does is that whenever you put this can and you will call this function, so it basically uh, take your ownership over the camera and when you try to read it, it then starts reading. So cap.release will uh, uh, make it all even again. It will put uh, it will put the ownership back to where it was. Basically, it won't be accessing it. Uh, so it has the application where I. So it has the basically it has the application where you want something to be accessed for a particular interval of time. Uh, then you want it to 
uh, let it come back. For example, if you are working on a project where you want to, uh, where you want that your colored sorting object should first of all sort green color, then sort uh, red color, then sort blue color. So when you open your camera, then it will go for green color. After that, it will the camera should uh, uh, again be closed. Then it should check for different color after that. So in that concern, it will be important. So uh, let's see. If, uh, OK, so this uh, is working for quite fine, I believe. Uh, so this is how you can access your uh, video your webcam and if you are using some any other uh, uh, USB camera, then you can access that also. So uh, before uh, heading forward, I'll just share this uh, important one CV talks. So this is a quite a proper documentation if you want to start with OpenCV, if you want to explore more algorithms, few of them I have explained, they are basics, they are starting. So if you want to dig yourself more, then I think this will be a great start for uh, you can have a variety of food transformations as well as gradients. The one we have tried, Kenya's detection. Uh, we'll be looking into uh, uh, so this is these are many other uh, segmentation watershed algorithms which can be applied if you are willing to uh, put more efforts and more learn more about this you can uh, simply visit it and you can check the changes so i'll just uh, uh the time being uh, we will be working on how you can put uh we'll be looking for how you can have a different color shades to be sorted out and uh, how you can put the uh, different colors and how you can separate it so this was all about the introduction for uh, a little bit of Python, a little bit of Python, and a little more about OpenCV, introduction to OpenCV. How you can access the files, how you can make the changes, arrangements, how you can add features, how you can sort it out. So now we will be uh, looking into how you can basically. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I'll just. So now we will be looking into how you can uh, put your uh, robotic arm into function by sorting different colors. Meanwhile, if you have any questions related to what we have done till now, you can surely put them in the chat box or you can simply ask. So uh, let me put this code also there. Simple one of select. In case anybody wanted, then they can show you. Okay, so now uh, let us start with uh, our the next PPT, which will be. Uh, which will be uh, like uh, how you can, uh, we have already seen what OpenCV can do, then in this one, we will be in this project, we will be discussing how uh, we can make different color sorting with OpenCV, and then how we can actually use a robotic manipulator, robotic arm, which can pick up the uh, color, so defined color size object, and which can, uh, put them into a, which can basically sort the different color uh, blocks in an environment and uh, 
how this sorting can be done, what challenges uh, we have encountered and how we have overcome them. So we'll be discussing about all these into uh, our next uh, uh, presentation slides. Yeah, sure, no problem. You can surely have uh, your uh, for next one. We will be working more on the we will putting our hands on on PyCharm. So you can you can surely have your PyCharm get ready uh, in the meantime. And you should uh, uh, as we have uh, in this uh, slides, I have shared what are your requirements. So if you have PyCharm already installed, then you should have particular libraries. So that we could get to the next one. So we have you should be having software. You should be uh, you should be having installed required libraries. That is important is a uh, CV2 and NumPy. So if you if you can simply put through like this, like if you can simply run these two, and you don't have any errors, you are not getting any errors. And surely yes, we can uh, we can do this in parallelly. So you can uh, if you want some extra creativity of yeah, and you can simply apply them while working. Uh, any other questions, thoughts, or suggestions? Uh, they are surely welcome. You can drop them in chat box, or you can simply ask. Uh, so, Sukesh, I had one uh, query. Uh, the next session also you are going to be uh, delivering for introduction to Gazebo and RVIZ. So, uh, yeah. Uh, how about? Uh, we take a break here and uh, we get our uh, let us uh, take any questions that we have and from uh, 230 to 3 there is a break a uh, tea break and uh, 3 onwards uh, we have the next session so are are those presentations also uh, something that uh, you are going to deliver now or are we sort of lagging behind i just wanted to know that uh, we are basically quite ahead so uh, if they uh, if people have questions, they can surely ask, and we can continue this one in the next session. There is no right. issue with that. So what we'll do is we'll take a pause here, and uh, okay. we'll uh, keep the forum open for questions, uh, and then we'll take a break uh, so that you also get a second break in between, and then uh, again at uh, 3 uh, p.m. we can start with the delivery of the next session. Sure, sure. Okay. So. Uh, uh, we will have uh, this forum open now for any questions uh, that any participants have. So I request participants, you can put it in chat or you can unmute and ask the questions. So we have around five, five more minutes in this session. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, uh, Arindam. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. And for me, uh, understanding uh, this programming language is tough. So, uh, my question is that uh, uh, while studying or uh, uh, understanding robotics, uh, is it? Uh, I mean, uh, is the is modulation is there? I mean, uh, or, or uh, an engineer must uh, be required to know all. All sorts of disciplines inside this. Yeah, basically, uh, robotics required a hybrid combination. Uh, most of the part which we have discussed might be quite uh, uh, like quite be grabbed more for from the IT uh, point of view because this is more like coding programming. However, as much as input the programming takes, it takes as much as input from the mechanical side, as same as from the electronic side. Okay, so if you are from mechanical then then there's a piece of uh, which might be quite uh, deep which have calculations which have uh, uh, something which is quite most related to 
uh, mechanical at some instant and where other in, uh, where other strings might be lacking behind so uh, it have like all things but they are they will be taking inputs in particular order and then for giving output uh, directly like it the all the orders will be coming up simultaneously and giving a particular result so either so the input from either mechanical electronics electrical or uh, cac so or if one of them is being lagging uh, behind then it will create problems with the working of our project okay I so think, so an engineer i mean so for example uh, 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 an engineer working in robotic form or robotic field um, mm -hmm. he can can that engineer be in a, like a uh, he's studying in or working in a module section i mean for example a mechanical engineering work, uh, is working on the mechanical part of the robot or uh, the electronic part is work uh, is being handled by the electronics and telecommunication yeah and, uh, exactly yeah okay yeah so uh, if you are mechanical then of course you will be working in uh, working in mechanical part of you but uh, the thing is that you will be knowing the requirements which can be fulfilled by electronics people so that doesn't mean that you will be totally should be qualified just in mechanical you have to be uh, taking inputs as a well queries from electronics part so whatever they will be giving you what like whatever they will be functioning or they will be commanding for the mechanical part so the design is important for the as a, as we see from the mechanical part but they are interrelated you cannot simply if you are uh, like suppose if you are in mechanical field you have to given if you are given a problematic scenario where you have to design a ship or like de design something which uh, design a ship which should never sink so that could be possibly uh, quite uh, feasible to an extent where you can you have a total world in world of imagine uh, total imagination around in your head that you have to design a ship which should not sink but when you deal with robotics then there are certain limitations that in case uh, if uh, the forces applied are not from the water but externally something happened some obstacles then that part should be rendered or should be covered by the electronic or something with programming purpose so uh, the interrelation the mutual understanding between the uh, mechanical as well as electronics is uh, important and uh, it should it, it is not related to the fact that you are you should be totally devoted to a particular stream if you want to work in robotics thank you thank you okay. Uh, any more questions? Right. Okay, so we'll take a short break here for around uh, half an hour, and uh, what we'll do is we'll continue uh, with uh, the remaining part of the session at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, would that be fine, Mr. Piyush? Yeah, that would be that would be great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Piyush, for such a wonderful uh, session, and uh, we'll join back again at 3 p.m. and continue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. So for all the participants, I've already. Uh,